House do now adjourn? And I call the member for Braddon. Mr Speaker, with International Women's Day just around the corner on the 8th of March, I would like to reflect on this year's theme, Be Bold for Change. A lot has changed in my electorate for women, and women have led the campaign for change. While I am the first elected woman for the seat of Braddon, it was Dame Eden Lyons of the former seat for my region of Darwin who was the first woman elected to the House of Representatives and the first woman in the Federal Cabinet. As I reflected in my first speech to Parliament, Dame Enid has left a rich legacy. Dame Enid knew that she would pave the way for women in the public service for years to come. We have come a long way since Dame Enid, but we still have a long way to go. There are many inspiring women in Braddon today who have led the charge for change. Whether it be in industry, local government or other sectors, there are many women who stand out in my electorate. We have leaders such as Professor Janelle Allison, former Pro Vice Chancellor at the Cradle Coast campus of UTAS, the Managing Director of Caterpillar, Kelly Elphinston, the Chairperson of the Cradle Coast Authority, Cheryl Bell Chambers. We have leaders in government, the first female president of the state's Legislative Council, Sue Smith, and in local government, our mayors, Bernie Mayor Anita Dow and Central Coast Mayor Jan Bond, and of course, more locally, to my hometown of Devonport, former mayors Mary Binks OAM and Lynn Laycock. There are many other women who often go above and beyond for our community and who often go unrecognised. And that's why in my former role as an alderman on the Devonport City Council, I was proud to support events like Diamonds of Devonport, an event recognising the contributions and achievements of local women and running concurrently this year a program of public forums aimed at educating and empowering women. I would like to thank my former council colleague, the Deputy Mayor Annette Rockley, for her work in establishing this event five years ago and for it continuing today. There are 130 women who have been named as a Diamond of Devonport, women such as Christy Lockwood, a photographer who generously donates her services to charities and non-profit organisations so they can fundraise from her work. Beth Cahill, who is there to enrich the lives of our elderly residents in their final chapter. Betty Lehman, who started the Coastal Driving School in the 1960s, the first female licensed driver on the northwest coast and continues to assist people with transport needs. These are just some of the women in Devonport who have been recognised for their achievements. And there are many more women across the electorate who are doing great things not for recognition, but because they want to be part of change. I am inspired by the work of the Tasmanian Minerals and Energy Council, TMEC, which is based in my electorate for the work that they are doing to change and challenge the perception of women in the minerals and resources sector, to recognise their exceptional contribution and to encourage more women to consider career opportunities in these industries. The Tasmanian Women in Resources Awards are coming this May. And with Tasmania's past success in the National Women and Resources Award, such as Kelly Jane Down from Bell Bay Aluminium winning the Outstanding Australian Tradeswoman Operator or Technician last year, I am sure there will be many exceptional women nominated this year, and I encourage those women to nominate. International Women's Day calls for us to commit to helping women and girls achieve their ambitions challenge conscious and unconscious bias, gender balance in leadership, valuing women and men's contributions equally and creating inclusive and flexible cultures. On March 8 this year, and indeed every other day, I will make it my mission to be bold for change. Let's stand up and do what we can to demonstrate our potential to be the leaders of change. Thank you. The member for